What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Fearless and I'm super excited for today's topic because we're going over a super underrated feature in Ableton 12 called Similarity Search. And this can actually be used in a bunch of different ways that I didn't even know until I started digging into this. So without any further ado, let's jump right into this video. So before you get it twisted, Similarity Search works on samples that are less than 60 seconds long. It's also going to work on the different Ableton instrument presets, the .adv and the .adg files. And if for some reason you haven't enabled Similarity Search yet, you're going to go into your preferences. We're going to jump down to File and Folder, and you're going to want to turn it on right here. Now, fair warning, it's going to take a while because it's going to go ahead and analyze every single sample that you have in these certain places. So just be warned that it's going to take some time but there'll be an update bar on the bottom here like Ableton always does so you'll know what the progress is. This is going to analyze all of the samples that Ableton has included for us as well as all the things that are under our places. So it's going to be important that you populate your places with all of the different folders that you use with your drum samples, samples, whatever you want. Throw it all in there if it's not already in there. As you can see, I go crazy with it. My whole entire computer is almost under places anyways so it took forever to run this search but once you run the search, you're good. And Similarity Search is available in three different locations. Well, it's available in some other locations, but it's in the same way. So three different ways. The first way is in Simpler. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my 808 track so I don't mess anything up. But now we're in Simpler right here. If this looks funny, this is because it's an effect track and I have some different knobs here. But if I go ahead and turn them off, it's going to look pretty much just like Simpler. And there's a couple ways that you can do this. First, you'll notice these arrows down here. So when you go ahead and click this right arrow, it's going to start the similarity search and it's going to go ahead and pick the closest sample to what you have chosen here. Otherwise, you can go ahead and right click and then you can go to next similar here or you can use the shortcuts that pop up there. So command and right arrow. If you're on Windows, that's going to be control and right arrow. And there's a couple different options. So to start everything off, you just have to go to the next one, right? We can't go to a previous until we've gone to a next one so we can go to the next similar sample and boom it just picks something out let's go back control z here's the original 808 and let's go to the right again sounds pretty similar let's do it one more time Yeah, so you can see this is a spin. So obviously I'm gonna have millions of different spin samples on my hard drive because I have so many dang sample packs. So now I can press command and the right arrow to go to the next one, or I can go backwards by pressing the left arrow holding down command again, but you can also press up and down. So holding command in that up arrow or control if you're on Windows is gonna allow us to set a new sample as the similarity search. So let's say we're going through this, blah, 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 and we find one that we like, but it's a little bit different from the original. Let's see, maybe this one. That one sounds pretty cool. Maybe we want to start a new search based on that 808 instead of our original one so we can get more of 808s that are in line with that one. So we're gonna go ahead and press Command Up or you can go ahead and right click, click Save as Similarity Reference. And since I already did it, it's gonna be grayed out. So now when we press Next Similar, it's gonna go based off that new search now. And look it. And it's probably going to go through a lot of the same samples because, again, we're on the spins and the spins is so popular. So let's say you're going crazy and you're going through them and you're like, ah, I think I like that reference better. You can get back to your reference by pressing command and down arrow or you can always right click it right here and go to return to your reference. It's going to turn us back to that reference that we set, the new reference that we set. So those are the ways that you can affect it in Simpler, but there's two other ways. The next way is inside of the drum rack. And for this, let's just go ahead and pick out a drum rack that Ableton has for us. Cool. There's a bunch of really dope sounds in here. So since we're in drum rack, we're getting that simpler, right? So you could do everything that you could inside of simpler, but we get a couple different things that are exclusive just to the rack. So the first thing is this show or hide similar swap buttons. And if we hold down option alt on windows, it's going to automatically go back and forth for us. See, and when we have it enabled, so if I hold down option or you can just click this, by the way. So if I hold down option or all in windows, you'll see that we have some buttons that pop up now. And these buttons are different because this is going to allow us to change every single pad at the same time based on similarity search. 
<laughs> what the heck? If you wanted to do one individually, let's say you just wanted to change one of them, you can do that on the individual pad right here by clicking left or right here. Let's say you want to change all of them, but there's two sounds that you like. Let's lock them in. So let's again, hold down that option or alt. And maybe I like this perk. I like this Tom and I like this. So we're going to lock those in, but everything else, change it. So let's go ahead and boom it. I'm guessing it's going to take a second. Let's see how long it takes actually. Okay, actually, it didn't take that long. Maybe like three to five seconds. All of these just updated. All right, so I made a stupid little pattern so we could see how close the sounds are. So let's hear this. All the sounds that we're using are not locked. So let's go ahead and change these now. So that crazy splashy snare right there seems to be changing up quite a bit to different sounding ones, probably because it's a very unique sound. But it's cool to see all these different sounds that I had that I didn't even know these snares existed. The third way is pretty crazy. It's actually in the browser. So while you're looking for samples, you can do an actual search. Let me show you. So let's go into the Fearless Kits. I'm just going to go into the Blizzard Storm. Maybe we got some good kicks. Okay, that's a crazy kick. So there's a similarity search thing right here. So if it's not there, then you need to go ahead and turn on that analysis in the preferences that we did at the very beginning. Otherwise, all of your samples should be shown here as long as it's in places or it's an Ableton sample. So if we go ahead and click this button right here, it's gonna go ahead and do a search for us. And it's even gonna give us a bar right here of how accurate it is to the sample that we did the search on. So as you can see, there's two of them that are almost identical. Okay, this is a frozen one. So this is probably when I was making it. And then we got something that, you know, 60, 69, 70% of the way there. It's not quite there. Yeah, mine sounds quite a bit different than those, but they're very similar kicks nonetheless. So why is this so useful? Why is similarity search so useful? Because when you're picking out different drums, you're trying different things out, trying to find the best sound, you may come across something that you like, but there might be something wrong with it. Maybe the high end is messed up. Maybe the low end is too much. Maybe it just quite isn't there, but you like the sample. So you can run a similarity search and you can find everything that's very similar to that. So you can get a similar vibe and you might even find something that's a little better that you didn't know you even had. So let's actually try this out in action. I have a kick right here. This is a pure born kick. And if you want to do this in the browser, what you can do is you can actually just say show in browser otherwise we can do it those other ways right using these arrows or holding command or control and the different arrows now that we have it in browser i can go like this boom and it's going to show us everything that's similar so look at there's actually a couple that are very similar because this is a very popular kick and you can see here you go everyone's recycling the sounds and putting them in here so also this is going to be a funny new feature because you're going to know right away if people's sounds are recycled. Let's test out some samples and see if we can get something better than our original here. That one sounds better already. Ooh, I like that. I think I like this one the most. Yeah, I think that sounds better than our original. This one sounds a little bit tightened up. So the person that made this, Venexi or whatever, probably tightened up that original pure kick and made it hit even better. So that's something that you could find. You might find that a sample is a little tighter and it just works better in the mix. But Ableton 12 has so many crazy features. You gotta check them all out. The piano roll goes absolutely nuts and the different transformation tools. Brother, you gotta check these out.